Hello, everyone. Uh, we are now talking about power analysis. Power analysis is part of planning a statistical study. You do not investigate the power of your statistical methods after you've collected data and decided between a null alternative. Right. It, it, it's kind of this thing where it's awfully tempting to uh, do a study. You didn't reject the null hypothesis. So then you compute the power of your test and you plug in your sample mean, uh, the sample mean that you estimated. And it's like, well, actually our, um, um, actually our test was not powerful enough uh, to detect this effect. That's circular reasoning. That reasoning is circular uh, because, um, because you get a sample mean that's close to the mean or the null hypothesis. And you then say, well, we didn't have a sample size that would actually reject this. Well, yeah, no, no kidding. Right. You didn't reject because your sample mean is probably is like plausible enough under the mean that you actually saw. So you yeah, that, that you, you never conduct any sort of power or type two analysis after you have uh, collected data and then done a test. You never do that. You always do it before because generally with the power analysis, what you're often doing is either. Um, setting up a region of plausible values that you expect your test to be able to detect reasonably or you're deciding on a sample size that will be able to detect um, uh, some effect size of interest um, with some given or with some pre-specified probability. So, all right, uh, enough about that. There are some R packages that are devoted exclusively to providing tools for study planning, right? And all of this falls into the, the area of study planning because you haven't actually done your study yet. You're deciding what sample size you want and what are going to be the properties of this test uh, prior to actually doing the test and then deciding if the test will actually have the properties that you want. Um, so there are packages devoted to that, but the, the stats package does come with some functions uh, such as power T test, uh, which is what we're going to talk about next. Uh, for uh, power analysis, and we're going to see how to use those functions now. Okay, so uh, the function power t test allows you to do pow uh, power analysis for t tests. Uh, it's it's an, it's involved. Uh, there's definitely an involved interface to it. So I would recommend looking at. Uh, you could also use the question mark for this, but you could. I would recommend reading its documentation to see how exactly it should be used because you've actually got a number of parameters uh, that are by default set to null. And the reason why is because you're going to set two of these three things. You're going to set either uh, both N and power, but not Delta. You're going to either set power and Delta, but not N, but you're, and you're going to set N and Delta, but not power. You're going to set two of these three things. And depending on which one you set, uh, and um, depending on which two you set will change what the function actually does. For instance, if you set n and delta to numbers, then the function will give you the power of the test for that combination of n and delta, where delta should be thought of as being the difference between the null and alternative hypotheses. And by the way, the sign of delta does matter. So if you have a delta less than zero, then that's going to be interpreted as being uh, mu a is greater than mu naught. Whereas if your delta is greater than zero, then mu naught is going to be greater than mu a. So the sign of delta does matter. Um, also, you have some other parameters such as uh, type, which can be either uh, one sample or two sample. You have paired as well as being a possible type because we, we saw at least three types of t-test. Uh, you have your significance level. That's something you need to set. So your significance level of 0.05, um, which is the default. Uh, you can set um, alternative being uh, either... Uh, if You can say alternative is two-sided or you can say alternative is one-sided. Uh, for the two-sided cases where mu naught is not equal to mu a... And the one-sided case is where either mu naught is less than mu, net, mu a or mu naught is greater than mu a or something like that. Um, but uh, you also have um, uh, you have the standard deviation. You basically have to guess what sigma is in order to be able to use this function. So um, you're going to have to plug in a standard deviation 
uh, parameter in order to be able to do some sort of power analysis. And now that's kind of all the basics. Now let's talk about what happens if you set N and Delta. Well, then the function will give you the power for that combination of N and Delta. If you set power and Delta, then the function will give you the sample size N that is needed to attain that power that you set for that Delta. All right, so let's uh, try this out. Um, yes, so let's try this out where we have, um, we're gonna be conducting a study and we're gonna be deciding, we have a drug and a placebo and we wanna test whether uh, the mean effect of the drug is equal to the mean effect of the placebo or whether the mean effect of the drug is greater than the mean effect of the placebo. I guess mu being larger is better. Uh, in this case, the drug is trying to induce weight loss, so we're talking about mean weight loss here. Um, so we would like for the mean weight loss of the drug to be greater than the mean weight loss under the placebo. Okay. Um, uh, so what we're going to do is um, uh, we're, we've decided we want a significance level of alpha uh, equals 0.01. You've decided, you believe that the true standard deviation is 20 and you have some uncertainty about this. So you want to, you want to make sigma fairly large. Um, you're going to estimate on the higher end of what you believe, because that will mean that when you're deciding what sample size you need, you're going to end up with larger sample sizes than necessary, uh, which, you know, it's going to be more expensive, but at least your study is more likely to be valid. Uh, or when you're looking at the power of the test, you're going to have lower power, which means you're not going to be too confident in your test's abilities. Um, that's, that's the effect of basically estimating high for sigma. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so there's, you have a colleague uh, who suggests that if you have a sample size of 20, uh, you should be able to, uh, let's see, uh, what, are, what is the setup? Uh, a researcher, uh, yeah, so, okay, so a, a researcher on staff suggests that you should have a sample size of 20 and you think that a sample size of 20 will, if your study has a sample size of 20, it's not going to be able to detect uh, reliably a five pound difference in the true mean. So you're then going to use uh, your, your power T test function to confirm your, your belief or check your belief, not confirm it because you don't know anything. <laughs> so you're going to plug in the sample size of 20 uh, the difference in question is going to be a delta of 5. You're going to assume that SD is 20. And then uh, what you end up with is a report when you use this function that then tells you that the power of your study to reject... So the, the so your study will reject the null hypothesis if this is the actual difference in uh, the two means only 10% of the time. And that is not particularly convincing. Uh, you would like instead for your study to be able to reject the null hypothesis for this difference in effect, uh, let's see, 90% of the time. You want to be able to detect that difference 90% of the time. So what sample size are you going to need? Well, you're going to set this time the power parameter 0.9 and leave the end parameter alone. And now this function is going to tell you that the sample size that you need is, well, round this up, 211. You need 211 uh, participants in your study to be able to detect this effect. All right. Uh, so the next function that we're going to look at is a uh, power prop test, which is for power analysis for tests of proportion. Uh, this function works pretty similarly to the other function, except instead of, instead of having uh, a type parameter, you don't have a type parameter. And you don't have a del delta parameter in, in either. You instead have the proportion under, uh, you might say the proportion of the, under the null hypothesis and the proportion under the alternative or basically two different proportions. Uh, so these are the uh, population proportions under the two hypotheses. Uh, there is, of course, no need to specify SD since P1 and P2 contain all the information. So uh, in this case, uh, so Gallup polls are serving uh, samples of 1,500 adults. Uh, suppose... Uh, a Gallup poll asks individuals whether they support Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump for president. The poll is using a significance level of alpha equals 0.05. Um, we want to test the null hypothesis that the true proportion is 0.5 against the alternative that the true proportion is greater than 0.5. Uh, 
uh, and uh, we would like our test to do well uh, when Hillary Clinton has a 1% one uh, advantage over Donald Trump. So in other words, when the true proportion is 0.51 as opposed to 0.5. Um, so in this case, we're going to say P1 is 0.5 and P2 is 0.51 and see what the power of the test is for the sample size of 1500. And what we discover is that you're only going to reject the null hypothesis of a tie only 14% of the time, which is unfortunate. You, you want to have more, you want to have better power than that. So you then, instead of setting the end parameter, you're going to set the power parameter. You're going to say, I want to be able to detect this effect 95% of the time. And in order to do that, you're going to have to get a, pot, a sample of 54,000 people, which is probably too many. You're probably not going to be able to afford such a study. Uh, but that's what it's going to take. Okay, so that's it for power analysis. Uh, the last video, I mean, you could probably skip this if you don't want, but uh, if you want to, although I'd be a little sad if you did, because I'm going to be talking about p-hacking, which is something that statisticians absolutely hate. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video, and I'll see you later.